I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about how to take a courageous step on a journey, a journey to claim your resource, to claim what you've been put on this planet to do. And it's the intersection and triangulation of three books. One is by Joseph Campbell, one's by Ryan Berman, and one's by a book you probably never heard of. Stuart Votola talks about how stories can be used to draw on for inspiration for your journey. Hope you like this. And for those of you, thank you for sharing and liking our show. And please leave a review. What I really needed was to recreate myself, which means to bring something new into the world that has never existed before. I'm going to take you on a journey to connect the dots, to triangulate courage with your, your vision and then your journey, and then how to use other stories to encourage you to take action. So this is the ultimate take action tip, because this is going to step you into the light. It's going to put you on the road towards what you want. And um, I was kind of marrying these three books as I was thinking like this is a book we interviewed Ryan Ryan uh, Berman on return on courage and he talks about courageous brands you know brands that have something they want to want to share with the world uh, but they don't have the courage to step outside you know and do it and then this is the ultimate book the hero's journey by Joseph Campbell and I'm going to study Campbell's uh, connecting the dots throughout thousands and thousands of years throughout all the story that really is just one story. It's one story that overrides all stories. It's the grandfather of every story, um, which is metaphorically applied to your own life a lot of time. Um, you know, all characters and villains are projections of our own limitations and, and what we believe we can and can't do. So that's where I'm going to connect these dots. What do you think? Nice. I've yet to read uh, Joseph Campbell's famous book, but I think I need to. You haven't read Campbell. I don't think no so. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, he's remarkable. So Campbell basically connected the dots and made a discovery about the one story that's really all stories. And his one of his books is called The Hero of a Thousand Faces. And it means, why does the hero have a thousand faces? Because there's a thousand different heroes. Um, there is just one story and they're all pretty much the same. And they have three components of it. They have the first component of the story is what's called separation. So you have a hero with a problem in a known world, a safe world, a comfortable world. It's an, an illusion. And there's a metaphorical problem that the hero will encounter. And initially that hero will decline the problem. They'll, they'll, they'll not want to leave their safe and comfortable world. You might be feeling this with your life right now. And so there's a, there's a separation because of an event, you know, a, a wake-up call. Uh, you know, uh, Campbell and talks about the phone rings and like a f metaphorical phone booth, and you, and you see it ringing, and you don't go over to answer it. And it'll just keep ringing and keep ringing until something happens that allows you to make that cross, that crossover. He calls it the crossover threshold. And then the second phase is initiation. Right, it's that it's that you're on your journey. You you cross out of the known world into an unknown world, and you go on a journey, and you're going on a journey to solve a problem. You know, a, probably a visible problem in stage one, but ultimately transfer transforms into a, a a transformational problem. So that's usually what happens in the heroic story, uh, and then uh, and then the third phase is return. So the hero completes the circle. They leave the known world with a problem. They get a call to action to separate from the known world into the known, unknown world. They get tests and trials and setbacks, and they meet mentors, and they have an antagonist, and they have um, you know different different tests, and then they overcome and have that epiphany, that transformation moment. And they figure out something, and they take that that gift back to the world. So that's the that's connecting the dots, and what what does story mean to to everybody here as you're, as you're listening is every story is a story about you. Every story is a story about having the courage, knowing what to do and doing it. That's what courage is. Knowing what to do and not doing it is a lack of courage, right? So you always know what you want to do. Um, so it's a journey from, this is a journey to claim your inner resources. This is a journey to finally 
step forward into a new light. You know, it's the, you know because we live and we die, and in the middle, we do things, we have things, we 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 have meaning, we have being, but in the middle is where you know the journey starts, and the journey the journey will will um, will unfold itself. What do you think about that? It's awesome. I mean, I've always courage when I first heard. Someone say courage. It might have been Brene Brown, but or when I first heard that courage is doing something in in the face of fear. It's not that you're removing fear; you're mm-hmm. doing it in face. That was a huge shift, like totally different perspective on courage. Oh yeah, I mean, because we, you know, in between living and dying, and we're all exactly the same. Like it's your life. It's not. It's not a life that someone else gave you. It's your life. So you have your own inner resources. You have your own bliss. And I'll talk about what that means basically means to follow your heart so you have things that light you up inside and then you got things that that kind of smother you and suffocate you because the phases of living are there's things that you do things that you have and who you become who you be it's called your beingness remember we did the 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 connecting the dots of ikigai Mm. the japanese say that your your beingness your your soul your 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 number one place of existence is the intersection of what you do um, in Okinawa by the way they live the longest in the world it's one of the blue zones uh, and they credit ikigai this concept that you have to be who you you put on the planet to be uh, Nietzsche said what one must be or no it wasn't Nietzsche it was um, uh, Abraham Maslow he said mm-hmm. what one can be one must be and it's about being um, so ikigai is the intersection of what you can, what you, what the world needs, what you're good at, what you can get paid to do, and uh, what you love. Like that all intersects to what you're supposed to be doing. So a lot of people right now, I would say a low percentage of people are actually in their ikigai. Right. They're close. Or if you're not there, you got to kind of be directionally on course. Uh, one of the funny things I've noticed talking to people when I, because I, I love those maps like that, trying to figure out exactly what your purpose in life is. A lot of times you can't even, they don't even know what they love. Like when you say, what do you love to do? People are like, I don't know what I love to do. They just know a few things that might be good, but they kind of get bored of them. So that's interesting too. Like it's, it's one thing to try to get all four pieces of the puzzle to get your icky guy, but they don't even know one of the pieces. I mean, one, one of the things that you need to do is go through the exercise. Right. It's a very simple exercise. You can literally stop the tape right now and do it. I'm like, what do you love to do? What do you catch yourself doing on Friday night when you're not being paid? What do you talk about all the time? What do you tend to buy when you have extra money? Like, that's kind of in and around what you love to do. And then what you're good at, ask your, ask your friends what you think you know, they think you're good at and what, what does the world need? That's not hard to figure out. Like, yeah. what are you good at that the world needs? Like, if you had to trade your wisdom and your time with the world, and how would they pay you back? Like, that's probably where you need to be. Now, if you set that as a, you know, using it, the metaphor of a compass, we're going to talk about metaphors, which is all narrative. You know, if you see, see compasses, right? Where do you see compasses? You see compasses in a, in a boat movie, right? Right. The pirate or the, the captain using the <laughs> compass. That's a metaphor for a journey. And a compass isn't a exact uh, navigation like a GPS is anymore. A compass right. is a, a guiding a guiding arrow. So you don't think about the the destination as a you know a port like Port Miami from from London. If you were to sail, you think about it as a guiding north star. Like if your icky guy is to do something that people need that you're good at that you love to do, you should be going towards that at all times. That's part of the, the narrative. So the metaphor of a compass is, is how I talk. How do you get from being in a dark, unsatisfying doing business to a light, you know, from dark to light to unsatisfying to satisfying to being from doing to being is a wonderful transformation. And that's all about taking that journey. Now, this is a book called The Myth and the Movies. This is by a guy named Stuart Oitilla. And there are 50 movies that he dissects. Literally, you can dissect a story and see all the elements of this exact formula. This is the formula for transformation, by the way. This is the exact formula. There's there's stories that are 3,000 years old that are this formula. 
uh, the story of Buddha, the story of uh, most Greek mythology, the story of Jesus, the stories of all the stories is about a hero that goes on a journey, that goes through setbacks and problems, and they transform, if you think about it. So l look, let me give you a short list of some of these movies, right? So there are 50 movies, and this is, this is some uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Die Hard, Thelma and Louise, they're heroes, they go on a journey. Uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, Dances with Wolves, Kevin Costner goes on a journey. Uh, the Unforgiven by Clint Eastwood, he goes from the known world back to being a farmer, he goes on his, his, uh, his journey. Jaws, uh, you know, Captain Brody, The Fly, Sil Silence of the Lamb, Jodie Foster's character goes on a journey. Notorious, which is a story of uh, Sean, what's his last name, Sean? For which one? Who's B.I.G.? What was his? Uh, oh, Sean. No, that's a different guy. The Fugitive, um, All Quiet on the Western Front, Platoon, uh, Citizen Kane, Ordinary People, Boys in the Hood, Casablanca, Beauty and the Beast, The Piano. These are all stories. If you Sheesh. think about the story, you, if you had this book, you'd see the whole loop. Whether the hero is in a known world, gets called to action, has that separation, goes into the unknown world, fights demons and dragons, and, you know, it fights uh, their, their, their evil and then returns back with some kind of gift to the world. So this is the entire process. Of course, all the Star Wars trilogies and all the Lord of the Rings were all in this model. There's 50 examples here. But every good story that sells well in the box office have, has extracted these elements of the hero. And I'm not telling you how to write a story. I'm telling you how to write your own narrative, how to, how to recognize that this... These stories can be used to create courage, inspiration, and a guide and light to going on a journey that makes a difference. Uh, so it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty important. Um, so if you think about like dissecting my own story, if you looked at me five five years ago, five years ago I was three hundred fifty pounds. I was in a job that was paying me a lot, a lot of money. I was severely disconnected. I couldn't sleep. I I I had panic attacks I had I was unhealthy mentally physically emotionally addicted to alcohol and, and uh, pills like that's the that's the that's the the hero before the journey in the story so the the hero has a wake up call they always have a wake up call and for me my wake up call was wandering into a hospital on on uh, on May 26 and thinking I had a heart issue being told I'm terminally ill with liver failure so I went from one world to another, and it made, it made me go on my call, my, my journey, my call to um, action. So going from a surrendered life to being a victim to being a hero requires a decision. And you have to cut away, right, from, for the word decision and go on that journey. And the first journey was basically survival, try to survive to get a transplant. And the second journey was was my transformation moment. So I'm in this unknown world of, you know, the safe world of my business and my family life. And I leave and I'm sick and I'm on this journey and I'm going through all kinds of obstacles. And then it get, you get finally to the other side and here you are thinking, oh, I may get a transplant. But the, the real journey was uh, the epiphany of recreating myself. So not rehabilitating myself back to what I was, what the addiction industry wanted me to do, call myself an addict, uh, go to meetings, claim I have a disease, claim there's also no cure, do nothing about it, versus recreating myself, creating a, a new narrative. So this was all very story-driven, because uh, I didn't want to see the narrative of what I've seen before with others that did that. I wanted to go live a different life. I wanted to be kind of um, kill the old body, so to speak, you know, Steve, just kill it. And, yeah. you know, the, the, no death, no life in a story. This, the, the, the character has to die uh, metaphorically. The character's demon has to die metaphorically to create that new life, that new birth, um, new meaning, a revelation, so to speak, uh, insight. So life's about, and since then, by the way, life's about the need to learn how to die metaphorically like certain things in your life got to keep dying for you to live so you got to keep doing this process over and over again it's a circle that's the one the one final note about the hero's journey it's a circle the hero comes back and then the hero goes on another journey mm. that's why star wars has like what seven seven episodes <laughs> so like shedding your skin yeah yeah so here you are 
you know, understanding the formula of the courageous journey to a transformation, uh, let, you know, and your, and your icky guy has to do with how do you do that in business? That's kind of where these roads all intersect. Like everyone's like, oh, this is life or this is business. Business and life are the same thing. Like that's why the Japanese don't retire, you know, in, in Okinawa. Like they do what they do. They, they be who they are forever. You know, their beingness doesn't stop at age 65. The Americans invented that retirement system. Like that's a new idea. Um, so there's a metaphor of the forest that, that Campbell talks about, the, the dark forest. And, and you have to find your own entry into the forest. Like to imagine yourself in front of this big dark forest and inside the forest is what you fear the most. You've got to find your own path. If you're on another path, it's safe. Like it will, will not bring you to transformation. And that's why you got to rely on that compass to kind of guide you into the forest and have that blind faith that you can figure it out. Right. The compass is a really interesting analogy because it is, you can't know the destination because it has to be unknown, but you have to go towards it. And sometimes you're feeling like you're going towards something. You don't even know why, but you're enjoying it. But you, like, right. like my, my, one of my favorite quotes is this Steve Jobs one of the connecting the dots. You can only connect them looking backwards. Right. So you got to just keep connecting dots, just going towards it, which is a hard thing to do. Oh, it's to- totally hard. Um, and, and the compass, I didn't realize that. Like a compass doesn't point you directly to where you're going. Yeah. It's just kind of a zigzag way to get there. Can you imagine being back in the day when they're just using a compass to get to another continent? Oh, totally. Um, I mean, you look at, you look at um, <laughs> the, even the pass at Lewis and Clark. You know, if you take another great ex- example, like Lewis and Clark went on a journey to find the Great Divide, right? They go on the other side. Actually, I don't know what they were looking for. Uh, why don't you look up what they, they were, were looking, looking for? Pacific, right? Yeah, they're right. looking for the other ocean. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, there was roads that were already established. They made their own roads. They, there was some roads they could take, but they took. They went into their own dark forest. They met, you know, they had. They met, They went on journeys. They met new cultures. They, they fought. They, they lived. They made friends. They discovered countless things. But their black forest had, was their own path, and and you have to have your own path. And talking to the compass, uh, Campbell talks about, and in all his writing is following your bliss. Mm-hmm. Like if you don't know where to go exactly, just follow your bliss. And that really is listening to your heart, listening to what your truth is. Um, you know, that's a, that's a big, you know, it's an authentic journey, not a, a program or a map. I mean, we put people on maps but my maps are designed to put you in, in action, to put you moving somewhere towards what you're possible and claiming your own ability and resource in the world, your own mark, your own creativity. The map is a great analogy as well because you have the compass. The first person to create a map couldn't start drawing the map without going. They had to go and then they right. start mapping it out. Now you have a map. Oh, no question. Yeah. Do you ever see the before and after map? Look it up. on. Uh, you don't Same. have to do it now, but the Columbus before and after map. Before Columbus discovered... America, or who, before they mapped it out, I'm not sure exactly who did, but there was maps of when the world ended, and they just kind of made up stuff to fill in the blanks to make the map full square. Wow. Well, the reality was they had no idea what yeah. was there. So as, as the new explorers went there, they were going into something they didn't know. So following your bliss, like the explorers are just drawn to that. They, that it gives them juice being... being uh, you know, the novelty in it, the, the leadership, the, the, of course, the status of doing such a thing. But the Hindu uh, origin of bliss comes from three words. The first word is sat, which is beingness. The second one is chit, which is consciousness. And the third one is ananda, ananda, which is um, bliss. That is the kind of the three you put together to follow your bliss. You know, what, what are you doing that makes you, you know, thrive as a being? What, what is driving your conscious, you know, your, your consciousness? And, and what, is, uh, what is it that gives you bliss? Um, a lot of people think bliss is a drug. It's not. Um, so that's it. That's the kind of the idea of, you know, trusting yourself and, and what makes you feel alive versus what your parents want for you. You know, you, right. you know what I want for my kids? I want them not to get hurt. Like, that's what parents want for you. So when they tell you to go to school and get a job and keep your mouth shut and pay attention and be a good boy and don't get in trouble, they just don't want you to end up in jail, right? Yeah. I, watched, I watched a documentary yesterday on, um, oh, what was it, the, the, the Jeff, uh, his name is Chris Wyatt. He's the one who killed his wife and put his little girls in an oil vat. Oh, my goodness. So I watched that documentary, and it, you know, the biggest part of the documentary was feeling for his mom and his dad as they were up there 
trying to forgive him for what he did, you know, whatever the reason why he did this horrific, monstrous thing. His parents had to forgive him, but your whole life, all you're wishing for your kids is to not get hurt. And all you want to do as a kid your whole life is try things that could right. hurt you. <laughs> All right. So one of the one of the most difficult parts of your journey to following your bliss is that your your friends and your family will 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 will, will talk you out of it. They'll not want you to do it because they care about you. Right. You got to decide. I mean, the three steps hasn't changed. That's why I'm so sure these three steps work in any situation. You make a decision. You cut away from that that thought that that you know whatever they think about you, they think it's, it's okay. And then you you choose the road. You choose your rich. You know your abundance is in one of two roads: the black road and the red road. Is what Campbell talks about. The the black road is wide and flat and paved. It's the path that already been stepped on. The red road is is in the dark forest. There's no paths. There's hills and winding roads. It's a ch- it's it's more dangerous. Um, and that's and that's what you do. And metaphorically speaking, the last of two ideas is the dragon. Mm. So your your journey is going to include a dragon, and in, um, in 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 Campbell's conversations about the dragon, the dragon is representative of that's what the hero has to slay in almost all the the great movies. The dragon it represents all the bad things in life, the things that you can't do, you shouldn't do. Every scale he says is a restriction or a, or a, or a limitation that the world puts on you. So. The dragon is the most scary beast in any movie. So that's what you're ultimately chipping away at on the red road. It's the red dragon. There's a dragon there. You got to chip away at it. So if you, you chop away what others think, you go on your journey, you choose the road, and then you chip away at slaying the dragon. And that's, you know, fear unfaced. You know, if you don't do it, fear unfaced creeps in and toxifies your life. Another quote. Like, I love that. Like, if you don't unface your fears, you're, uh, you're in serious trouble. So that's the kind of the concept of, of, of the journey, you know. Chop away what others think. Go on your journey. Follow your bliss. Choose the red road of your life, like what, where your compass takes you, if you're following your heart, and then chip away at your dragon. And then you'll be faced with what, you know, what... Um, what he calls the courage, you know, the, the ability to be courageous is to, to know what to do and to do it. And you'll go on your journey, and in every single movie, at some level, when you face up to the bully or you face up to the dragon or you go on that journey, the dragon will relinquish the treasure much easier. Um, but the dragon is always a projection of you. Remember the, the scene in Star Wars where Luke went into the cave? Oh, to right. fight Darth mm-hmm. Vader, yeah. and he fought, you know, his biggest fear was Darth Vader. He chopped off Darth Vader's head, and it rolled, and it was he, his yeah. head was in the helmet. The fears that you have is a projection of you. The, the scales and the dragon is just what you fear. And when you get that, when you fight the dragon and you chip away, uh, the dragon will relinquish the treasure. In completing the circle, the third part of separation initiation and return the hero comes back with the prize the hero delivered the elixir uh, remember luke came back with the force and then the world's a better place you this know. is a story that just keeps on giving um so that's you take a look at your at your journey and, and and connect stories so have your antennas up when you see stories or you're studying stories new or old and you're connecting to that inspiration that's going to initiate your courage you know, it's going to initiate you to take the action. Uh, know where it came from. Joseph Campbell. All right. Hope this helped.